good morning. Thanks for coming to hang out today. We're uh, about an hour north of Arthur, Illinois, where we picked up this load behind us yesterday. If you haven't watched yesterday's video, don't forget to go back and check that one out first. Gotta watch them in order, otherwise nothing makes sense. There's only, what, 2,000, what are we on, 2,084 today? I've been doing this a little while. <laughs> if you're new, good luck. You can just start from here if you want to. <laughs> Got lots of stuff for you to watch. So from here, we're going into Ontario and uh, we're gonna find a spot to sleep somewhere up there tonight, not too sure where. I'm gonna cross through at Detroit into Windsor. We'll see what life brings us. It's another exciting day. I have eight drops on this load, all in Ontario. Starting in, uh, I have one in London, uh, Oshawa, I think there's one in Brantford and then Oshawa. Uh, there's a couple more. Carmichael, I think. North Bay, Ottawa, and then we end off in Dorval, Quebec. So it'll be most of the week. It'll be most of the week. A lot of them are very small deliveries, just like two or three boxes. And there's a couple of them that are like a hundred and some boxes. So it's all on the floor. I've got to hand bomb it all off, or at least tailgate it, bring it to the back for them. So I get my workout out of it as well. Should be fun. Let's get on the road, shall we? Not going anywhere without first dust in this place. Man. Diesel, I'm gonna have to start charging you. <laughs> he goes outside and somehow collects every morsel of dust that he can in his fur. And then he comes in here and he shakes and somehow it is evenly dispersed and spread over the entire truck. It's a talent of his. I'm actually pretty proud of him. It's, it's very nice. Everyone's gotta be good at something, right? All right, now we're ready to go. to Pilot Travel Center number 468 in Gilman, Illinois. I'm gonna grab a shower here. I guess the parking is to the left? Is that the only parking they have? Got a back in there? How do I? I guess the parking is to the left. What a weird parking lot. What a weird parking situation here. Where's their parking over there? Oh no, they got more parking over here. Okay. Some of these truck stops are uh, uniquely set up. That's okay, as long as we can figure it out. It's hard to eat healthy on the road. It really is. I got a fridge in the truck here where I can keep some groceries. Not too much though. You gotta stop pretty often to get groceries if you wanna make food for yourself in the truck all the time. I try to do that as much as possible, but I do find myself eating eating out every now and then in a restaurant, maybe twice a month. And a good majority of the time, like I'll be grabbing stuff like uh, like this right here. These are my favorite. They're not really the best for you, but it's a barbecue rib sandwich. It's not an ad, but uh, they're delicious. They're just not the best for you. So it's sometimes tough to find good food that's healthy that you can make for yourself in the truck. Because if you eat out every meal every day, you're gonna be spending a fortune on food. However, you stop at a Walmart, you stock up on some groceries, you make the food for yourself in the truck, you'll save yourself hundreds and hundreds of dollars every month, if not every week. to the Michigan border here, the last state to go through before Ontario. 
Michigan's another beautiful state for colors in the fall. This part of the state hasn't quite changed. You can see a little bit of red poking through here and there already, but like I said the other day in Wisconsin, give it a couple of weeks. Crossing <laughs> Brighten color. Entering Michigan. Changing time zone. Michigan changing time zone? Okay, Eastern time now. Good to know, good to know. Clocks just jumped an hour. this road for 121 kilometers I don't think so okay diesel no steps this time okay got a nice soft landing right on the grass sometimes I don't make them use the stairs if I can park up right against a curb like this then the drop isn't very far down to the grass and it's softer than landing on cement right and I want them to still be able to jump up and down every now and then, you know? I don't want to totally baby him and make him use his steps all the time and then have his body get even weaker, you know? It's good to use your muscles every now and then. He's nine years old now, so we'll see. I'm careful with him. I don't want him to have any, any back or shoulder issues. And part of staying healthy is staying active. I realize that we live in a truck and that's not very active so every day if we can especially when the weather is nice we try to get out and get moving at least we don't do like a big workout or anything every day but we at least walk you know try to get a couple of miles in or like today I'm not gonna be walking a couple of miles around this rest area but just to get out of the truck you know, smell the fresh air, let him sniff around. It's good for you. Especially as truck drivers, we have to keep ourselves active. You know the average lifespan of truckers in the United States, at least? I'm pretty sure it's about the same in Canada. The average lifespan is 65 years old. That's, uh, that's the life expectancy. And that has a lot to do with the fact that we sit for a living. Uh, it's very easy to get complacent and just, you know, deliver your freight, do your stuff, go in the sleeper, go to bed, wake up the next morning, do it again. Sometimes it's difficult to remember to get active, get your heart pumping. Uh, the way I like to say it, or the analogy I like to use is, you know, before we had DEF, uh, if you let your diesel engine idle overnight, maybe to stay warm or cool overnight so that you don't, so you get a good sleep, in the morning when you would start that engine working, or when, when you would start working that engine, you'd get out onto the highway, you get all that blue smoke pouring out behind you, right? It's all that crud that gets built up inside your engine when you idle. Now we have exhaust systems and emission systems and stuff that prevents it from doing that, but that doesn't mean it's not still doing that. It's really not good for a diesel engine to idle. It's not good for your heart to idle either. You know, the more you let your diesel engine idle, the more crud and garbage that gets built up in there, plugs things up, starts running at lower capacity, starts burning more fuel, and eventually, you know, it can cause some bigger problems. You guys know what I'm getting at, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? If you just let your heart idle all the time and you never get your heart beating, day after day after day for years. Some of us drivers, you have to admit, we, we don't get our heart pumping for years, maybe even for decades. Like some, some guys never get out of their truck really. And it's really bad for you. And that means your life expectancy is cut by many, many years. And you don't want to become a statistic. All right, the statistics show that a truck driver's life expectancy is 65. If you want to beat that and live longer than that, you have to get your heart pumping. That doesn't mean you have to do a big exercise every day. You don't have to have this big routine. You don't gotta get out of your truck and do push-ups and jumping jacks. It just means get your body moving. We can't sit, we're not designed to sit. The human body is designed to work. 
but enough on that. I think you guys get the point. That's why we try to get out and walk as much as we can. And I'm not the expert on this. I'm not the best at this. We don't get out nearly as much as we could. Working on my belly as well, but I try to anyways. And it's important for diesel too, right? It's not good for, for anybody. All organisms and all bodies are meant to be moving, not sitting. That's my lecture for today. <laughs> I hope you liked it. Diesel, diesel, hold on. Oh, I'm wearing these like Crocs. I use them because they're really convenient. You can just slip them on and off. And I, I like to try to save my work shoes because they're Skechers and they're very expensive. So when I'm just going out of the truck for a short walk or going into the truck stop, I just slip on my Crocs. And uh, they're waterproof, right? They don't got those holes in there. Sure, they look ridiculous and my wife makes fun of me relentlessly for wearing them. But they're pretty comfy and they're quick to put on and off and they're cheap you can get them at walmart i know i talk about the trees a lot but i like nature i do look how huge these trees are here look at that thing wow i kind of want to climb it diesel should i climb a tree I don't think I will. But look at that. Wow. How old do you guys think this tree is? Diesel, what do you think? No, 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 not that one, Diesel. Not that one. That one's mine. That one's mine. It says the dog run is along the back fence. Well, here's the back fence. I don't know if dog run means something different here, but where I'm from, a dog run would imply that there is a fenced in area for a dog to run around in. Even if they do want them on a leash, like the sign said they want them on a leash. I don't see a dog run here anywhere. You tell me there's a dog run, I'm expecting a fenced in area. A lot of truck stops are actually installing those kind of dog runs now. It's really cool. You, just, you can go in there and uh, just let your dog run around at the truck stop within a fence, like safe fenced in area. Got little water bowls there for them and everything. It's pretty cool. So this is where we are. We're still, I guess, in western, southwestern Michigan here. You see the Great Lakes there? That's where we're headed to. So, got a little ways to go yet. This is 383 kilometers. I hear you, I hear you. 
What's that, Miles Trucker Josh? I know. You guys and your system of measurement, I'm telling you. You guys are pretty awesome, but your systems of measurement are interesting, to say the least. So what did I say? 383 kilometers divided by 1.61. Uh, 238 miles. That's much we gotta do today yet. Let's get at her. Well, we're here in Detroit. Detroit, Michigan. We're about to, uh, there it is, bridge to Canada. They're gonna charge me again. They're gonna pay, I have to pay to leave. In 500 meters, keep to the right on I-96 and then keep to the right in 250 meters. Or maybe it's that I have to pay to go home. I've mentioned this before, right? Where do I gotta turn? Right here, yeah, this is a, uh, yeah, here we go. We don't want to go to Lansing. We want to go to Canada. Meters, keep to the right on I-96 East. Where's the dotted line start? There we go. There you go. See, I don't know if, like I mentioned it before, I, I don't know if Canada is charging me to go home because they don't want me back, or if America is charging me to go home because they don't want me to leave. I don't know, but the bridge costs, I don't know what it costs. It gets billed straight to the company through the license plate, I think, or I don't know. Most toll booths now don't have actual people in it anymore. It just gets straight billed to the company. I think it's something like, what, 25 bucks or something, somewhere in there. 20, 25 bucks. Bridge to Canada, this away. And one more. All right. In one kilometer, keep to the right on I-75 South I-96 and then Wait, what? to the left in 620 meters. Why does that say South uh, Toledo? Tuladu. I, I, I don't want to go to Tuladu. You can see the bridge already off to the left, just ahead of us out there. The Ambassador Bridge. The most busiest border crossing between Canada and the United States. The busiest commercial. I think, what did they say? Like a billion dollars worth of trade crosses this bridge every day? Or is that along the whole border? I forget what the stats are. I think it's a billion dollars a day. I don't know, lots. Not too many cars going over the bridge anymore though. I can't wait until this whole thing is over and everything goes back to normal. just stopped in here at the parking. I guess this is the duty-free parking. Make sure I get all my paperwork and everything in order. Everything all ready for them. So when I get to the window, I'm not scrambling, looking unorganized. That's always fishy. You always want to know where you went, where you're going, who you are, if you have any suspicious things with you. I'm just joking, but <laughs> I'm getting tired. You, uh, you want to know how many days you've been outside the country, where you went, where you're going, what you're hauling. You don't want to be sitting there uh, with your tongue tied at the window with at customs. It just doesn't doesn't look good for you. So we came down. When, when did we leave? We left. Let's look at the calendar here. The calendar. It is. Saturday today, and I left on what? Didn't I leave on? I left on Wednesday, right? So one, two, three. We've been in the U.S. for three days. We went down to uh, Racine, Wisconsin, and then picked this up in Arthur, Illinois. It's going up in Ontario here. Eight drops. Let's go.
Welcome to Windsor, Ontario. Back in Canada. And you know what's really interesting? At this border, only at this border so far that I've noticed, that I know about, they want us to wear our masks the whole time. Like when you get to the window and until you leave, they want you to have your mask on. But I'm wondering, how do you know it's me then? They don't ask to confirm your identity or anything. They just, you just wear my, anybody can steal my ID and use it to get across the border. All they gotta do is put on a mask and have like similar eyes to me. And that's kind of sketchy if you ask me, I don't know. I don't know. I think it'd be better to uh, have no masks because the borders I cross at usually in like Pembina Emerson, no masks are allowed there because they want to see your face, obviously. This one's different. And this one's the busiest one too. That's weird. And look at this guy. Hasn't turned his lights on. Has no idea. Try to signal him, turn my lights off, turn them back on. Turn them off, turn them back on. Now nah, he has no idea. Driving with no lights on. I have got the munchies. A serious case of the munchies. I'm gonna have to pull over and find something. Okay, so I went a little overboard. I regret nothing. Sometimes you just get the sugar cravings. Of 200 meters, take the entrance to the ride on Highway 401 East RTE 401 London. You know, talking about trucker health and then going and buying a bunch of junk food in the same vlog, I get it. The irony did not pass by me there. It is what it is. Well, another day is done. I'm gonna vacuum up Diesel's uh, bed here and then take this sheet off of here. I had an interesting experience just now. Let me tell you about it. I'm gonna sit down for this. This is kind of freaky. So we park here uh, for the night, found a good spot. And uh, I put the steps out for Diesel and he crawls down. I'm taking him for a walk. And I'm about to, you know, the big open grass area, right? Nobody's around. Looking, I'm like, uh, maybe I'll take him off the leash. Middle of the night, you know. What could possibly go wrong? So as I'm thinking about this, I'm turning around to look at Diesel to go and take his, take the leash off, right? And unclick it so he can run. I turn around and Diesel is staring at something in the distance. I'm looking at him like, what are you looking at? A bunch of grown skunks just hanging. It was like a gang of skunks. So as Diesel was running towards me and I was holding him back, you know, they all like raise up their tails and get all aggressive, right? And I'm like, oh no, I thought they were gonna go running away. So I was trying to like, yell at them without waking up everyone around here. I was yelling at them, trying to like, you know, intimidate them to get them out of here. These skunks are the most courageous or dumb skunks, I don't know, I have ever met. They didn't run away, uh-uh. They started moving towards us staring me straight in the eye slowly walking closer and i'd lunge at them and come back and lunge at them and come back i was trying to get them to get away from me and get away from my truck right because we're sitting right outside the truck here and they just kept marching towards me with that just staring me down all of them i didn't think i don't think they wanted to play so i we we didn't literally run we we walked briskly away even though diesel didn't want to uh and they just kept following us. The skunks here are different, a different breed, I think. Usually wild animals would run away. No, this guy, he wanted to fight. Prowling around and marauding around the parking lot here. I went around the corner and there's a driver sitting out there uh, just relaxing outside his truck. I guess he's a night owl just like me. And I went up to him and I just let you know, there's, there's a bunch of skunks out here. He's like, oh, I know, I've seen them. They've been prowling the parking lot. I'm like, really? So he's seen them too, and he's been had his eye out for them because they're a little aggressive. They'll come at you. We're being terrorized by a gang of skunks. Do skunks usually act like this? I don't know much about skunks. Don't they avoid humans? Do they, they, do they like hunt us down in packs now? 2020 can't get any crazier. So they're around my truck here right now. 
they went around and underneath and I quickly got diesel in the truck and uh, I, I threw the steps in underneath there I, I took a look around I couldn't see them where they went so I quickly jumped in his door I didn't even go around to my side because they were probably waiting there for me to ambush me so I, I got in diesel side over here and I closed the doors and I locked the doors so they couldn't get in but they're out there bunch of terrorists man what is this place coming to Ontario you've got a gang problem yikes so that's my story I figured that'd be kind of entertaining for you I've been talking for like five minutes now I've, I've never never had that happen before every time I've seen a skunk in the past I just you know sort of yell at them wave my arms and they go running off oh these guys came they came towards us and another driver said he came at them too or that the, the gang of skunks came for him too. They'll chase you down. What do they want? <laughs> what are they going to do when they catch you? Surround you and like just like take turns spraying you? That's just mean. I'm going to take you guys out with me in the morning, okay? And we're going to find these buggers. Diesel. I think I'm going to leave you inside for this one. Because I don't actually want to fight with them. But I do want to get them on the vlog. I don't know where they went now. They they did go all around my truck. I've been waiting for them to pop out again. So I can show you. But I guess tomorrow. Are skunks. Do, are they nocturnal? Do they come out just at night? I hope so. Because I don't want to deal with them all day tomorrow too. Bunch of gangsters. Seriously. A gang of skunks. How many. How many Diesel. How many think there were? There had to have been at least six, seven, half a dozen full grown skunks just prowling. Never seen that. I've been trucking for what, nine years over the road now. I've seen all kinds of stuff. Never seen a gang of skunks that are aggressively chasing down drivers. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but caught me off guard. Got my heart pumping a bit. I was like, oh, why are you coming after me, man? What do you want? Got nothing for you. So uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll try to find them without getting sprayed. See if I can get them on the vlog. I don't know if they're nocturnal. I'm pretty sure they only come out at night, right? During the day, they're probably going to be sleeping. But we'll see what we can do. If, if I see them around here again, I'll pull out the camera. I don't smell them, so that's good. Maybe they moved on to the next driver already. It's like they wait in like the bushes here until a driver gets out of their truck. For me, it was when I was walking diesel. The other guy, it was when he went to go take a shower. And the other guy was out of his truck. Who knows, probably went inside, got a, probably a shower as well. They wait till you get out of your truck and then they like stalk you. Bunch of skunk thieves, they're gonna, they're gonna mug you. Threaten to spray you if you don't give them their, give them their wallet. I don't know. We're gonna figure this out tomorrow though. I'm gonna stay inside my truck for now. I'm not really scared of skunks. I just really don't want to get sprayed. And it was kind of weird how they were aggressive. Oh, well. All is good now. It's 2020. I'm not really surprised anymore. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button.